Okay, so my clock says that it is 11 o'clock. Um, I have been having some streaming problems, and so if you find that the feed cuts in and out, I'm continuing on. Um, and so if it pauses, don't worry, the video will catch up um, in a little bit. So, um, so I do apologize, and uh, hopefully we won't have too many interruptions today. And uh, I want to start by saying hello and good morning and thank you for joining us today for Art Starts Explores. This is our fifth theme that we have uh, that we've done since the start of the uh, Moving Art Starts Explores online. And it means a lot to us that you come and uh, make this time with you and your family to sh So um, before I get started on our three rules, I want to let you know that while I'm making and focused on my artboard, I am also joined by uh, my program manager, Leah Horlick, who is going to be in the chat channel. So if you have any questions, any comments, uh, if you wanna share what you're making at home with us, we would love to see it. Um, but reach out with uh, any questions you have as we go along, and Leah is there to be able to answer those questions. Uh, who am I? I'm Kay, and I work at uh, Art Starts in the gallery as a gallery coordinator and preparator, which means that I help uh, design and install the shows that we put up in our gallery to explore alphabets. Okay, I'm going to move that to the side because it is officially 11 o'clock. So, uh, before we get started, like we do every week, I always like to make sure that we make the time to uh, look over our three rules of explorers so that we are being uh, respectful and mindful as we practice uh, art making together. And so the three rules of explorers that we like to look at every week are, uh, the first is respect. So we practice respect by uh, listening to ourselves, checking in with ourselves, asking ourselves how we're doing today, if we, uh, if we seem to be a little impatient or we're kind of snapping at somebody because maybe we didn't have a great sleep or uh, we didn't get enough breakfast this morning or whatever it is, um, we just have to tell ourselves um, that we need to be a little patient with ourselves today. Uh, or maybe we're feeling really great. And so when we name that and we know how great we're feeling, we then want to check in with each other. And so we want to ask other people who are making with us today how they're doing and maybe they didn't have a great morning or maybe they caught some bad news or whatever it is um, and then we want to be gentle with the other people around us and just use our words to, or signs to communicate. We want to respect our tools and so that's whether or not we use our tools in an interesting and different way than they are intended to be used um, or whether or not somebody else is waiting their turn to be able to use the tools um, and so that goes back to us using our words to ask people uh, what they need. Maybe they only need something that you're... And so we're able to then pass that over to them. They can do whatever they need and then they can give it back to you. Um, and then uh, I want to also uh, remind us that being respectful is acknowledging the land. And so my broadcast today is coming to you on unceded Coast Salish territory, specifically those of the Musqueam, tsleil and Squamish people. And I'm trying to do my best to be a respectful uh, guest while I host these workshops so that we can play and learn together. The second rule of explorers is that nothing is for keeps. And so everything that we make today is just always be trying to practice surprising ourselves. If we know what's going to happen, then we're not really trying anything new. And, and I mean, there's definitely some benefit to trying something over and over again that you already know and there's comfort in that. But for explorers what we're trying to do is we're trying to do something a little different. We're trying to do something that you wouldn't normally do. And that can be scary but it can also be really rewarding especially when you find out um, or you learn something that you weren't expecting. Um, so always be asking yourself what happens if I... And so that relates to our third rule which is no expectations. 
Um, so we're practicing our surprise. You know what, I think I kind of jumped for the, this week. I was talking more about uh, expectations. So practice, nothing is for keeps is that because we're trying everything and we don't know what's going to happen, that means we don't have to be super precious with what we're making. So we're not making anything that we're gonna keep or we're gonna put up on the shelf or we're gonna put up on the fridge when we're all finished. Everything that we're trying today is just to try. And so that means that when we're all finished, what I encourage you to do is put it away. And if it turned out really good, take a moment to acknowledge that, to tell yourself you did a good job or tell the other people around you to do a good job, but then try maybe one more step. And whether that's crumpling up the piece of paper, or if you have permission from the adults that you're working with, rip up that piece of paper. Or if it's just taking everything apart and putting it back on the shelf so you can make something again um, in the future. So everything that we're doing today is um, just for trying out. We're just exploring what happens if we try something. It's not for keeps. And we always like to keep those in mind every week for every workshop that we do. Um, and we have workshops every Saturday at 11 to 12. So um, if you are watching this video live right now, that's great. If you're watching it um, as an archive later in the week, you can always go back and check out our other sessions. Um, last week we, we did erasers. We had a two-part session on erasers. And so again, today, this is the first part of two parts where we're exploring the alphabet. Okay, so with all that introdu introduction out of the way, we, uh, we're ready to go. I'm gonna sit down at the artboard now and let's start exploring the alphabet. So there's lots of different ways that we can explore the alphabet. I mean, if you're learning to read or if you like to read, um, bring the alphabet every time you look at a word, every time you uh, assemble those letters together that are part of the alphabet um, into a word, and you've signed the meaning or you've learned meaning, um, and you're reading a book, you're exploring the alphabet. So I already, there's, there's already a lot of learning, there's already a lot of structure around learning how to read and write. So what we're doing today is we're going to acknowledge that that kind of learning is there and we're going to step to the side and we're going to uh, explore different ways of looking at the alphabet that isn't just reading and writing. I want to also, you know, acknowledge that the alphabet that I'm using today is the, um, is the Latin alphabet. So it's the alphabet that we use in English and French. Um, and it's important that I name this because there are so many different alphabets. In fact, there are alphabets that look, or there are languages that look, or sorry, that use um, an alphabet that's very similar to ours, but they might have one letter that's different, or they might have an additional letter, um, or they may have a few uh, learning one of the oral um, indigenous languages that haven't traditionally had a written script, so it's only communicated by using their mouths or their signs, there's no, there's no written component, um, you might be learning a way of, uh, of how you translate the sounds that you make, um, and then you're taking this Latin alphabet and you're trying to um, write down something that in the past didn't actually have a, a writing system. So, um, I just wanted, before we got started, to acknowledge and name that I'm going to be using the Latin alphabet, so the A, B, C, D that you see here, and that um, I'm sure many of our viewers who are coming to us um, in British Columbia are familiar with. So if those are our, take the, the alphabet as a container, and we're going to start pulling out some of those letters from the alphabet. And now they're not, they're not letters and they're not words, they're just objects. They're things that we can use to practice our art making. What do I mean by that? I mean, I'm gonna pick a random letter, I'm gonna pick the M, and I'm gonna pull it out onto my page right here. I'm just gonna write an M. And so without a word, the alphabet, this all of a sudden could be a whole bunch of different things. And what I mean by that is right now, we, I've called it an M, and I drew it this way in an M so you could see it like that. What happens if we turn the page? Is it still an M? I mean, we know it's an M because we talked about it at the beginning. But what if I came up to this picture and just went, what's that? Would you know that that's an M? Maybe, if you turned your head. If you came up to it when you looked like that, maybe you'd recognize it as a W. But let's look at it a little bit deeper. And here, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make it bigger bigger on the page. 
And I'm going to draw it upside down because that's what we were looking at right now. So this isn't just a letter, right? This was also a line that I drew. And if every time that and we go, oh, those are lines as well. So really, it's not even just a letter, it's a bunch of lines. And can we draw or write this letter multiple ways and still have it look like an M? So we know it's an M, but how many different ways can we draw that, that letter, um, the letter M, and still have it kind of look like an M or we know it's an M and somebody else comes along and they don't actually recognize it as an M. Uh, how about, what if I make a bunch of M's in a row? So M, 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 M. So I said M, and I know that those are individually M's, but if you're kind of gonna come up to that and see it just on your own, you might think that that's just a bunch of bumps, right? If I was gonna look at that and pretend that those weren't M's, I could kind of just draw it again by making a curvy line. So I was both inspired, I both had the idea, because I was thinking about the M, to make this bouncy, bumpy line, come along and cut these now, right? And I could actually isolate each one of those to show that they are M's. And this is a really great practice. If you're, if you're not sure what to draw, you, you feel like you want to draw and you want to be creative and you want to write something on the page, but you can't think of something to do, picking a letter and then just starting to write it over and over again is a great way to both exercise and warm up your brain, but it's also another great way at these letters that we use regularly. And at the beginning when you're learning your letters, right? It, it's all about trying to practice your hand and to really control so that when you draw that big M or when you draw that small M, it looks exactly the way you want it to or it looks the way um, the, the thing that you are copying so that it's the same way it is about you just being able to make the M shape. But, but here we don't, we don't actually mind if the M is on an angle or if the little M is the same size as the big M because we are just seeing what happens when we write the letter over and over again. So this, this kind of disassociation, or when we, when we unlink those, um, those meanings that we have. So right now, this is the letter M, and if you're learning how to um, read, you start to know that this has a sound of mm. -hmm. But if we come to this and say, okay, this is not an M now. For the, for the next five minutes, you, we're gonna agree that this isn't an M, this is just a line. Now the opportunities for us to do different things with it become, um, become varied. We're able to do more things. What do I mean by that? I mean that if this is just a line and this is just a cool uh, shape that is forming here, why couldn't it also be a texture or something that we use to color in? So here, I'm going to draw a picture of a cat. And you can draw whatever you want. In fact, I encourage you, unless you really want to draw a cat, to draw something completely different than me so that we can see all the different ways um, that this next, this next thing that we're exploring can be different. And so you'll be able to see how mine looks versus how yours looks. Okay, so I've got a sitting my cute fat cat that is sleeping in my studio right now. This is uh, in here. My, my cat, cat, cat boy, has all these dark patches. So I'm gonna draw a few patches here. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a few patches, but why couldn't I draw or use the line that we had just identified? And you might not have used an M, right? You might have used an O, or you might have used an R, or you might have used uh, a D, or whatever it, it, it was. So I'm going to take a pencil crayon now, and I'm going to ask myself, what if Cat Boy, actually this is kind of a different cat now, oh no, you know what, I'm going to color Cat Boy um, this color, even though my Cat Boy isn't that color, um, and that's fine, because we're just, we're just exploring, it's okay, I could make it pink, in fact, I am going to make it pink, right, because
because we're just going to say what happens if. There you go. Right? This is this is part of exploring things that um, maybe don't feel comfortable or maybe it's something we wouldn't normally try. So normally I don't color in my cat's pink, but today I'm going to color in the cat pink. And I'm going to keep working with M. And so I'm going to color in my cat that shape. I wonder if you can see that. I think I might actually have brighter marker. Hmm. It's alright. I think it'll I think it shows up. Yeah, I'm gonna just check my camera. Yeah, you can see it. Great. Okay. So I'm coloring in my picture just using M's. What do you notice while you're coloring at home? wherever you're exploring this today. What happens? How is it different than how you normally color? And go over it as well. What happens? Right? Keep drawing that M. And you don't have to just do the angle like this. If you just like draw, writing it over and over again um, as individual M's, see, see how that's different. Does it look different? Great. I just went left to right. M, 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 M. But what happens if I just do individual M's? M, 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 M. And you know what? I think I'm going to do a whole bunch of different M's that are all just individuals all over the front because when I'm drawing this cat, I want the chest to look like it's coming a little bit further um, so that it has dimension. And so I'm going to, by adding more color here, that means that that's going to come best and that this is more far away. Uh, same with the paws. I'm going to come in. I'm just going to draw small M's here. And then the cheeks as well because uh, kitties have those big cheeks that pop out. And then I think I want to go with that. That's more like a kitty. There we go. Okay. So I colored in this cat just using the letter M. Maybe I should have used this marker. It was a little bit darker. You know what? I can now because it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look good. What happens when I now use this marker, or sorry, this pencil crayon on top? Let's see. Oh, and I kind of like that. And I just, I didn't even put those together. And by doing that, it kind of looks like fur, right? So for this one, because I explored um, the cat, I picked a letter that ended up being really great because um, it does kind of look like fur that hangs down off of a cat. But what would happen if I did it with a P or with an O? And as we're exploring today, if you want to redraw the same thing as you are drawing at home and try it again, I encourage you to do so. And if you took our tracing um, workshop a couple weeks ago, and even if you didn't, it's still available online, you could go over to your window and you could fast trace the picture that you want to draw again. Um, I'm okay with it being a little bit different. Oh, you know what? That's what was missing. I'm gonna add W's. There you go. W's. Right? You can see the W here on the side. So now all of a sudden the W's are my whiskers. Right? I'm gonna do the same thing there because I really like that. Right, that's great. Right? So I'm using the alphabet as a way to color in and to texture, to add texture to my drawing. Oh, this time really skinny legs. I want a really fat body this time. Actually, that's a little bit more like my cat. What about your cat? Do you have a pet? Do you have a cat or a dog or a fish? Yep, I have a, I have a cat. Oh, very, very fat cat. Here, there's the back legs. Okay, so there's my, there's another kitty, and I'm going to take a different letter this time, and I'm going to go, I'm going to use orange, because why not? So we're just trying things out, and I'm going to pick the letter, what, what would be a letter that I don't think I would normally use to color it in? You know what? I'm not a huge fan of capital letter G. That's just me. I just don't like how my handwriting looks when I uh, write a G, and so the way that I can get around that is by practicing over and over again. 
and then eventually I'll feel good about uh, writing that letter. So those are the letters I'm going to use to color in this cat. And I'm just going to start. I don't know what's going to happen. This cat is wearing a sweater that has a bunch of G's on it. And that's because I'm putting all the space in between it, right? Because usually if you were to wear a shirt like that, there'd be a bunch of spaces between it. But as I go along, oh, I did that one kind of weird. You know what, I'm going to add the small G's now. And I'm going to add the small G's around the neck. Yeah, I like that. Small G's feel a little bit more like, um, like fur. Actually, kind of like curly fur. Oh, I wonder, I wonder if we could use G's for like curly hair. Okay, so this cat, I've decided, is going to have really curly hair on the top of its head. We could have probably used a G for whiskers, too. So this is a great way, especially if you're learning your letters, you don't have to use that page, um, the practice page. I think this is right. I haven't practiced my letters in a long time because I've been writing for so long, but I think that's how you do it. And so when they give you the, the letter page for you to trace over, Usually you would use one of these pages, and you're just doing it over and over and over again until your um, your hand just knows what to do. But we're kind of doing the same thing here, rather than just tracing the dotted line here. And if that's your homework, you have to still do it. But if you wanted to do some extra practice, and if you wanted to try some things uh, with other people in your family, or if you've been writing for a really long time, this is a really good way just to warm up your hands, especially because a lot of people now are so hitting that G over and over again on the keyboard. That's pretty easy, but it's a different kind. Like you can you can see just that move that movement that I just did there, hitting the imaginary G button with my finger versus holding the pencil. I'm using different muscles in my hand. And try that out. If you have a computer near you or a keyboard or you have a phone nearby, Check out what the difference is when you type a G on your phone versus typing a G on the keyboard versus holding a pencil in your hand. That G, how are they different? Which muscles do you use? Do you notice your hand and arm is held differently? Even when you're drawing big and small, that can start to affect what kinds of arm or uh, what part of your hand and your arm that you're using. So this G that I drew was about this big. And so if I'm watching, and you can see as well, right, because you're watching this video stream, you can see that when I'm drawing the G, my hand is moving. And you don't have to watch me if you're doing this at home. You can just watch your own hand. So, uh, so these muscles here are moving. My wrist is moving to be able to support the circle that comes around. My fingers are moving to move the pencil. And then when I move it over here, same thing. So I'm able to do that G there. But that was, that was mostly all movement in my hand and my wrist. What if we were to hold the pencil really, really straight and we were going to try and use our whole arm to draw a G? And I'm going to go really big this time to do this, just so we can see the difference. I'm going to try and hold this pencil. In fact, I'm going to grip it like this, just so that I don't feel um, tempted to use my finger um, without, sorry, not use my, um, my whole arm, because I just want to use my arm. Okay. So let's see, what, what is different here? Okay, my wrist isn't moving, I'm keeping it really still. My fingers aren't moving, but I'm still able to draw that G. So where is that movement coming from? All of a sudden, it's not my fingers. I see in my video, because you can only see my hands and my arm. But when you do it, maybe you could do it in front of a mirror, or maybe you could have somebody take a picture of you or a video while you do it, so that you can see while you're drawing these things, or when you're writing these letters, what part of your body is being used when you are making these marks. And you'll find that when you're practicing art making or when you're doing any kind of jobs to even making your bed, that you could challenge yourself to try to use different parts of your body when you're doing tasks that you do all the time, especially when they're boring and you're like, oh, I don't want to do this today. Get, challenge yourself. This is another way of practicing art making. Today, I'm going to try and do everything that I normally do for my chores, but I'm going to do it using just my shoulders. Is that easier? Is that harder? 
what would it be like if I could only move my arms at my shoulders? Right? This is, this is all about being able to imagine making. Okay, so this one was my wrist again. My fingers kind of moved and my hands kind of moved. And then if I was to hold it like this, but not the gripped, uh, and just try and draw lines. Oops, my hand still wants to move up and down. So what do you notice? What do you notice when you stop looking at the page and start paying attention to your hand and your body when they're making these marks? It's a little different every time. So this is this was all just because I wanted to see when I was drawing this and I noticed that this G made really cool uh, fur and it almost looks like a lion now, right? Right, like the mane of a lion. I really, I actually, I really like that too. Oh, no, I'm going to keep, keep doing the orange. I'm going to make an even bigger mane because lions are kinds of cats, right? So next time you're just as easy as using the letter G. And somebody might go, what? And that gives you the opportunity to say, let me show you. And then you can practice together and you can teach somebody else how to use the letters. And their letters are going to look different than yours, right? And remember, we're using the Latin alphabet today to do these. Um, what if you were to do this with some another alphabet, right? Maybe um, somebody knows uh, traditional or simplified Chinese. And while they wouldn't have a G necessarily, they might have um, another character in their alphabet that has a similar kind of tail, right? The tail part. And then they can try and do it. And then you can compare your picture with their picture. I don't, I unfortunately don't know any uh, simplified Chinese, so I can't try that today. But if you happen to know it at home um, and you want to send me a picture of what it would look like to draw a lion or a cat, using a different um, alphabet to color it in, I would love to see uh, the differences. Okay, so that was us trying to uh, use the alphabet as a texture, so to color it in. And that's uh, just one last thing before we keep going. If you have different ways to color, right? So if this was, here, I'm gonna draw the outline of this G. Um, when you learn to color, your goal was probably just to stay within the lines. And you can see here, I didn't stay within the lines, right? I drew over top of it because I wanted to make the, the mane, I wanted to make the hair, the fur of the animal bigger um, than the picture that I drew. So at the beginning, you know, we're trying to stay within the lines, but for explorers, we don't need to stay in the lines, right? We're trying a whole bunch of different things. So sure, one section here, I'll color in in the lines, but maybe that's, right? Because there's, there's nobody telling me I can't do this. Right? Once, once you you feel good about being able to do this, and if this makes you feel nervous, especially if you've been practicing so hard to try and get them in the lines, this can actually feel scary for some people, right? I'm telling you that it's okay that you don't, and you might go, okay, that doesn't make any sense. I want it to look, I want it to look perfect. And when you're doing a coloring job or when you're trying to do something for keeps, that makes sense. But for here, we're, we're trying to explore those emotions. We're trying to be a little bit nervous. We're trying to try and do things that we wouldn't normally do. So um, that was just forth, up and down. Maybe you also learned to color using circles, right? And so how are circles, that, that, that curly pattern when I'm coloring it in, how is that any different than using the letter O, right? The letter O over and over again. O, 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 O. Right? It's almost the same thing. I'm just picking up my pencil every time. And what if over here I wanted to use the letter P? P. I won't say that And you can look at them and see how is that different? Well, this has still got the same kind of loopy line as the O did. Right? And maybe I can't get as close to the edge. And maybe because I can't get as close to the edge to these lines here, maybe that's okay. And what is what does it convey? Does it convey different emotion? I feel like this right here is almost a calmer, more solid, less chaotic, uh, perfect, um, something that maybe you could buy in a store or print on a printer. It's very, it's very precise. Whereas this feels like it's got a little bit of more tension. It actually wants to jump outside of the lines. And this one, because there's even more space in between here, feels like the peas really want to escape. 
And so if you wanted to make something feel like it had a bit more excitement or emotion, just using different shapes when you're coloring it in can change how the picture ends up looking. So perfect and precise and everything matches. And then maybe there's a lot of tension over here or maybe you wanted to draw smoke and show that smoke doesn't just sit still. There's actually movement or fire. If you were going to draw a fire, and you've done this in previous weeks, why not just fire to draw the fire? You don't have to actually draw the outline all of a sudden. Doesn't that look like it's got a lot more movement than if you were to just draw the outlines? Fire. Right? So there's my fire. So this is me using letters as textures, and there's so many different ways that you can try it out. So I encourage you, if you have a coloring book at home, there are lots of adults and parents who have coloring books right now because um, a lot of people are rediscovering, they're relearning how calming and comforting it can be to just sit down and add color to a picture. So if you all have a coloring book that you are either coloring together or you each have your own coloring book, you challenge yourself that all the colors that you add to one page are just using letters. And there's lots of different um, coloring pages that you can find online if you wanted to print one out. Or you could also just take a pen and you could draw your own outline and you could trade them. So one person draws one picture, another person draws another one. Um, and then when it's time to color, you can change them. You're, you can uh, exchange them. Okay, so those are patterns. So next one I wanted to do was if you had, um, if you've joined us in previous weeks, especially for tracing, um, I, I uh, introduced this idea of using codes, secret messages for tracing. And the way we did that, we drew um, one message on one page, and then we had the secret or the, um, like the lock on another page. And the idea was that you could give one person the message, uh, but they would need to have that key to be able to unlock what the message was. And alphabets let us do that as well. And the way that we do that is uh, what we can do is we can do something called a letter to number cipher. And so a letter to number cipher is basically practice by putting the alphabet A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And if you have your own alphabet, I don't know if I can actually talk and write at the same time. If you have uh, another alphabet that you are working uh, with that isn't the Latin, right, the one that we use for English and French, and that's, um, that's what this alphabet is. It's called the Latin alphabet. If you're not using this alphabet, you're using a different alphabet, um, then uh, go for it. Like Write down each one um, along here. The numbers won't be the same. So, uh, for example, if you were using uh, the Korean alphabet, Hangul, I think there's only 24 letters in that alphabet. Um, so when I finish putting all the numbers here, um, if you're using a different alphabet, um, your numbers might be different. That's another challenge. Can you talk and write the alphabet at the same time? That, that's a really interesting challenge. Um, it's kind of like patting your head and rubbing your tummy at the same time. Um, it's trying to do two things at once. And generally the lesson when people ask you, can you pat your head and um, rub your tummy, it's uh, hand-eye coordination, so the ability to do different things. But in general, it's really hard for a lot of people because you have to split your brain to do two different things at the same time. And generally speaking, it's best to give all your focus to one thing that you're doing. And that's really hard these, these days, again, because we have computers and we have phones and we have videos and we have things that are playing all the time. And we're not always, we're not always sitting in front of our TV and our computer, but we might always have a video playing in the background while we're trying to do other things. And it can be really hard to juggle those two things at once. So um, I encourage you to try this out and if it's really complicated, next time you want to like watch something at the same time as maybe doing your homework, you'll realize that you're not really giving all your attention to the thing you're doing if you've got that noise, the captions playing um, at the same time as you're supposed to be focusing on your homework. But let's see, maybe you can do it. Maybe you've got a skill that I don't, but I know I'm going to, uh, I know I'm going to mess up if I talk while I'm going to do this. So I'm going to say K, L, M, oh, my marker's starting to wear out, N, O, P, Q, 
R U V W X Y Z. Okay, so I used my Sharpie for that. I'm gonna pick another color again. Let's use, let's use green this time. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna count from one to 26 and I'm going to put the number underneath each one of these letters. Three, four, five, six, seven, right? And so it's just a number that goes with each one of the letters starting from one, one, two, three, A, B, C, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And same thing, if you were using a different alphabet while you were um, writing your uh, master here, you might have uh, different symbols for your numbers as well, right? Because this is still, this is also um, uh, a different alphabet, but uh, sorry, a different number system. Um, and it won't be the same depending on what, like, what language you've learned to read and write in. I ended at 14 here, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Okay, and so as I've been doing up at the top, I'm just gonna write these boxes just to show you, just to keep organized so that we can see that which, which numbers match which letters. Okay, so now I have my cipher key. Now I know that the letter, that this letter corresponds. And so what that means is, is that, and what I suggest is you try, you, you do it with two pieces of paper, because sometimes it can take a while before uh, you can wrap your brain around these codes. But let's say, um, let's say your little brother has, he keeps sneaking into your diary and you want to leave her. Maybe your next door neighbor and you have decided that you're going to write a secret code on when you're going to next play in the cul-de-sac. Or maybe you just want to imagine that you're a spy or you're a detective and you need to crack a code. However you want to use these, these ciphers, can be really interesting to start uh, thinking about how numbers and uh, letters are connected. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a real simple message. And the simple message is going to say, um, what is it gonna say? It's gonna say, my uh, candy is, ooh, big message, under, my bed. Okay, and so I'm going to pretend that my cousin is coming over and I don't want my siblings to know where I've hidden my candy. And I'm going to be away when my cousin comes over, so I want to leave them a secret coded message that my siblings won't be able to figure out. So I've written this note, and now I'm going to put the, the cipher. I'm going to put the number to letter uh, code here. And before I can write it down here, I want to figure out what numbers match. So it's clear here so you can see it on the page. Oh, it looks like I need to sharpen some of my pencil crayons. I'll do that next time. Uh, does that work? Yep, that works. Okay. So what I'm going to do is for each letter, I'm going to figure out what the number is. So for this one, it's M. And I go over to my... So I'm going to write 13. And because I've done this before, I'm going to write a dash between them so that I know that there's a difference between the numbers because if I put a uh, 13 there and then I didn't put any dash, I might think that it's one and three. And so because it's 13, I'm gonna go 13 and then I'm gonna go dash. But maybe that's part of your code. Maybe it's supposed to be extra complicated and the person that you're giving it to, you don't want them to know whether or not it's a one or a three or a 13 or maybe you'll add another dot or a different color um, there's a lot of, lots of different ways that you could be practicing writing your own secret codes. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. Y, 20 is under the Y. And then C is a 3. 
dash a a one dash n fourteen dash four d dash y twenty five. Okay, so I'm going to quickly go through and I'm going to figure out the rest of these. So nine. But if you're doing your own code, you can be you can uh, you can match them up now yourself as well. D four dash four right two D's five fourteen U one four and then M which I knew from here thirteen twenty five two Okay, Whew. so now I have all of these numbers, and because we already knew the message here, we know what the letters translate to. And so to make it a little clearer here, I'm just going to kind of circle the different words so that I know when I'm translating them. My candy is hidden under my bed. Okay. So now we have all of these numbers here. And this was just the background work. This is just the work of us practicing this code before we even write the message that we're going to. So now I'm going to take my marker again, and I'm going to leave the message for my cousin. And I'm going to go, dear cousin, 13, 4, 25, 9, 19, 8, 9, 5, 14, 21, 14, 4, 5, 18, 13, 25, and 2, 5, 4. From All right, there we go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep this, maybe I'll hide that in a special place, or because I know this, this code, I could write this out another time, or maybe you wanna make a secret code book, right? If you wanted to make a code book with your cousin and all the messages that you leave, maybe you're gonna uh, make a code book that you, that you come up with, you can write them all in there so that they always know they can go back and figure out um, what the key is, right? Because this unlocks what this code is. But now, so you hide that out of the way and you can leave that there. And it doesn't matter if your sibling, your neighbor, your grandma, your guardian finds this, it's a secret code now. And so that's another way that we can practice um, exploring with the alphabet. All right, I'm gonna put this over to the side. This is always fun, right? Doing the codes. I did a lot of secret codes when I was growing up, and I definitely had a code book. My code book was also my sticker book, and so sometimes what would happen was um, I would have, especially if I had duplicate stickers, what it would do is uh, uh, attach to them so we could ma leave messages with stickers. It's just I didn't always have a lot of stickers, and so if you have a lot, a lot, a lot of stickers, like dots or whatever, um, you could definitely make a secret code where the M is, you know, I don't know, a blue, your blue stickers, or um, the, the ends could be all your bird stickers. What kind of bird is that? Oh, well, whatever. That's okay. We're just exploring. There, there's my bird. <laughs> the very weird baby bird. So um, in this key here, I figured out what kind of different things are going to be connected to my letters, and now I've created a new cipher, and that word cipher is spelled like that. It's all about um, one thing being, this, uh, um, being a, a connected, having a relationship with this into whatever you want. You don't have to use letters. You don't have to use stickers. It could be whatever you want to make this key for. And you save this so that when you are writing your secret code, you always have something to refer back to so that you can unlock that secret code. Okay. So in the last... Um, 10 minutes of today's workshop, and here I'm going to write alpha as texture because we 
to do that for those ones over there. For the last part of today, uh, I want us to kind of go back to the texture that we had. But for this one, what I want is um, if you have a pair of scissors um, and you can grab them, I encourage you to go grab them. But if you don't, I love ripping paper. So I rip everything that I do because I want to show you that it doesn't have to be perfect. And I love ripping paper. But if, that did, if you're not ready to do that, if you've already been challenged in different ways today and you need to get, grab a pair of scissors, then go ahead and grab yourself a pair of scissors. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the letters themselves and make them into the pictures. And so this is again um, an exploration of ready-made. So when we make objects and then we use those objects um, to make our artwork. And so a ready-made is easy as me, you know, picking up this eraser and saying, okay, this is now, sure, it's still eraser, but for for today, it's going to also be just a So this ready-made casts a shadow from the light above it. It's round. Uh, it kind of comes up from the page. And then I can make it into something else because I don't, I don't have to make this. It was already made is what it means. And now, there you go. I've got a spider. All I had to do was take that thing and then add something else to it, and I had something different. And that's what I mean by ready-made. So I'm going to move my eraser to the side, and I'm going to stay on the cat theme because here my cat off to the side with the bell on his collar. And so he has inspired me today to use the word or the letters from our Latin alphabet, cat. All right. So we've done some deep looking before when we were looking at the textures. Um, but now what I want us to do is, is I want us to look at these, um, these objects as shapes on their own. What else do they look like? So when I'm looking at the A, because focus, I'm focused on the A right now, I see a triangle, right? And then I see a table, right? If you cover that part there, you see a table. There, there's a flag. And as we deep look at these shapes that somebody has told us and taught us, and it is, this is an A, right? This is the letter A. When we read it, we, uh, depending on the letters around it, it's an ah sound. Um, but this is an A. We know this is an A. But I also just said that it's a triangle. And it's lines. And it's also a V. And maybe it's a, maybe it's a flag, right? Or maybe it's a sailboat if I was to add another shape there, right? So it becomes a whole bunch of different things when all of a sudden we all agree, we agree that it is an A, and then we say, but what else is it? And we really look at it. And you can see, I didn't even add anything else to it right now. All I did was use my fist around. And you can do this with a book as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to show you that I'm going to rip the pages here. So don't rip the pages of your book. But if you wanted to take a picture book or a book that you really like, or maybe there's a, a title on the front of a book that you, you enjoy, or even going out in public and there's a sign in front of a store or in front of a park. And what you can do is you can take your hand and you can block off the letters from your site just to see what happens when you deep look at those different letters. And not all A's are going to look the same, right? So me drawing this A, even just right now, capital letters versus small letters, right? They're going to look different. And each person's handwriting is going to be a little different. And maybe one person doesn't have uh, a little tail on their T. Or maybe another person cap on it. Just there, just with my handwriting, I drew two or three different ways of writing the word cat. So there's lots of ways that we can be looking at these letters and seeing all these different shapes. But now we're going to go, okay, yep, this is cat. Yep, these are the letters C-A-T. But what are they if we separate them and make them into objects of their own? So this is where I was saying, if you want to get your scissors out and you want to cut the page, go for it. If that makes you feel better, you, you can totally cut your... I, I, uh, I really encourage you, if you have permission from the adults, and, and adults, I hope you're making things um, along as well, but um, 
but yeah, if you have permission to rip up the page, try it. Because not only is that a good way to practice your hand um, and control of being able, and you see I'm going very slowly. Sometimes I'm going a little closer. I'm using my fingers here to press down, to rip real close to it. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I went over a little bit here. I got into the seat. That's okay. It doesn't, it doesn't matter at all. I already know it's a C. And you who are watching, you know it's a C. But it doesn't have to be a C anymore. As soon as I take it and, and tell it that it is just an object, it's just a line, a shape that I made it in. And this is, you're telling it, right? Normally somebody else tells you this is, this is a C and this word means cat. And you have to, uh, you have to pronounce the C with the hard k sound. But right now we're telling, we're telling these letters what they are, right? It's our decision. And so I'm telling that this C, that it doesn't, it doesn't actually go like that. It goes like this. This is where I want the C to be. Because I've decided, I'd be here. Mm, I think I want it to be like that. And this A here, mm, you know what? I don't even want it to stay as an A. I'm gonna rip the legs off of it. I want it to be a triangle. And so I'm gonna put that right there. And so now I've got these two extra lines here that were an A, but now they're just lines that I made. I've got those pieces right there. You know what? That's not enough. I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it a few times actually. And that's a great thing about making your own ready-mades here, right? We can do this as many. We have paper. And because we're just exploring, if you're using your recycle bin, you've got so many pieces of paper, mail that comes in, envelopes, um, packaging. As long as everything is clean and 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 safe to use, right? Always asking permission, especially if the recycling bin um, is something that you don't usually use. It's your, your parents who use it. Um, or maybe you're over at your cousin's house or maybe you're over at a friend's house. You always want to ask permission before you do it. But generally, bin, they don't care anymore what happens to it afterwards. It's going to go somewhere and it's going to turn into other paper. So um, as long as you ask that permission, you should feel pretty safe just being able to use any of the materials then you're in your recycling bin. And I'm just using boring white paper, right? I only have two colors, the black pen and the white. Can you imagine if we were using uh, my recycling bin? I have brown letter paper, and I know that this week I got some mail on a blue piece of paper. Gosh, really, what, what am I doing? Why am I just using white paper? Well, next week we're going to have part two uh, working with alphabets, and I am for sure gonna have more of my recycling paper uh, over as we explore more of the alphabet because I can white paper and show you how cool uh, it is when we're just using our recycling bin and we don't we don't have to worry about being precious or being perfect. Okay, one more time. And I'm ripping these pretty fast um, because I've done a lot of ripping in the past. If you're finding that the ripping is going really slow and you just feel more confident with a pair of scissors, that's cool. Also, you don't have to be this precious, right? You could just go crazy. You could just rip the page and find out what happens, right? You're not actually thinking about it. Here. Oh. What happens? Oh, I got this interesting little line that I didn't plan for. I'm going to add it to my ready-mades now. Same thing. Oh, okay. So part of triangle anymore because I shut off the corner of it. And it kind of still looks like flag, but I am missing part of that. What does that become? This is, this is a way of practicing that we're not so attached to it, right? This was the whole um, idea of nothing is for keeps. If we're not going to be uh, quite as careful when we're making these, then we're not quite as worried when it doesn't look exactly the way that we had uh, intended it to. Okay, so just by ripping that A, look at that, I got a new T, right? The corner of that A has a T in it and a V in it. And I wouldn't have known uh, however it was going to rip. Okay, so remember, these, this was the alphabet, right? Th these were letters that we pulled from the alphabet. And now I have all these interesting shapes here just by writing the word cat. 
I wrote the word cat three times, so just by writing the words cat, cat, cat. And so what can I make? I'm using these different letters. And I don't know. I just I just wrote this today with you. I don't know how this is gonna turn out. You know what? I like this one because it's a little bit bigger. I'm gonna move this one up at the top here. Yeah, that kind of looks like a belly. I like that. And then I think I still like that being there. That kind of gives it a, a bird look to it. I like it. The accidental V. Yeah, that's the one. So then, oh, you know what, that, that could be like a wing. Oh yeah, I like that, maybe it has a wing. And now I know that if I rip the legs off the A, it looks like a wing, so I'm gonna do that again. <laughs> so, and my bird with really, actually I'm gonna move the wings down here. My bird with really, really big legs. And you know what, I think I'm gonna give it a neck. So I'm gonna take that T again there, and then I'll put these up on top. There you go. And there, there's my bird. You know what, I'm going to take all these pieces here that I ripped up, and I'm going to make a nest. And then it won't actually be as obvious that the, the legs are really big and I'm trying to make anything perfect. <laughs> there we go. And there's my nest for my bird. So the cat became the bird. What did yours turn into? What word did you use? Did it turn into the same thing? Did you have the word cat and then you made another cat out of the letters? And don't forget, when you're all done, you look at it, you go, okay, that was interesting. What happens when I do it again? Maybe, oh, that's a pole that time. And then, okay, well that's, gonna, that's gonna be like the container on top of it. And then inside my container, maybe I've got a cake. Yeah, there you go. And you know what, I'm gonna draw something inside of it because it's okay. Because we can do whatever we want to these. They're no longer a word. There you go, there's a cake on a table. There's the floor. Maybe there's some other tables around in the shop that I just made, all just using the word cat. All right, so this week we explored uh, using letters um, as our ready-mades for this activity right here. We used the alphabet as a cipher where we created a code, and we used the alphabet for texture. There are lots of different ways that we can use the alphabet to explore art making, and I'm gonna continue our art making exploration next Saturday at 11 o'clock, and I would love it if you could join us. You can also check us out on Instagram. Okay, so next week, I will be back uh, at 11 a.m., and I hope to see you then. I'm gonna leave the video running for an extra five minutes while I clean up, because part of this is that we're just gonna put everything away when we're all finished. Um, and that you can leave any comments, you can share your pictures of any work that you did today, um, and if you have any questions for Leah, she's still here for another five minutes to answer your questions. Later today, I'll have the video up, and it'll be all captioned, and you can watch this video all over again. Thanks so much.